Welcome to the GI Oncology Now Roundtable discussion focused on colorectal cancer. My name is Dr. Shika Jain. I am a GI medical oncologist at the University of Illinois Cancer Center, and I am joined by many esteemed colleagues, and I'm very excited to start this discussion. We'll start off today with uh, quick introductions of our uh, group today, so we'll start on this end. Hi, I'm Sunil Kamath. I'm a GI medical oncologist at Cleveland Clinic. Um, also do a lot of research in uh, colorectal cancer and early onset colorectal cancer in particular. Arvind Dasari, uh, I'm a GI medical oncologist at uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Uh, my name is Sakti Chakrabarty. I am a GI medical oncologist at the Sideman Cancer Center in Cleveland. And we discussed at the beginning of this uh, discussion that we're going to refer to each other by first name because we're colleagues and we're really excited to jump into this discussion. So we're going to start by, I'm just going to ask you all, can you tell me a little bit about kind of the history of colorectal cancer, treatment paradigms? What were we seeing before, like 50, 60 years ago, or even 25 years ago? What were we seeing before that we're then going to talk about what's changing? Yeah, maybe I can take a stab at that. So, uh, 5-FU was discovered in the late 1950s, 1957 uh, or so, uh, and then for the next uh, probably 40 years or so, most of the research centered around how to make it more effective, how to give it, what's the right dose, what's the best biomodulator, so literally that was the only drug. Uh, and then uh, in kind of the late 1990s, early 2000s, we had another couple of cytotoxic uh, drugs approved ironotecan and uh, oxaliplatin. So this is truly the era of cytotoxics. Uh, and then we moved on the next decade or so uh, from the mid-2000s where we had uh, biologic agents uh, developed. So these were uh, monoclonal antibodies against uh, VEGF uh, receptor um, uh, and VEGF ligands and um, also EGFR uh, as well. Now. Uh, these are technically targeted therapies, but I think the way these drugs were developed was that uh, they were developed and then we started looking for biomarkers for these drugs, a classic example being the EGFR antibodies. We're still trying to refine that patient population even now. Uh, but the next phase of development was truly uh, developing targeted therapies in a kind of a thoughtful manner, kind of reflecting the developments we had in uh, sequencing, uh, molecular biology, where we identified the target first uh, and then developed drugs against them. Classic examples would be HER2 new, uh, KRAS G12C, uh, immunotherapy, uh, and uh, several uh, others. So I think that era is still ongoing uh, and we're still reaping the benefits from these developments. And along the way, we've also developed a few salvage therapies, such as regorafenib, uh, TAS-102, uh, and more recently, Proquentinib. Yeah. So I think that's an excellent summary of what happened in the last four to five decades. You know, I just want to add that I think we moved on from the idea that colorectal cancer is one disease to an idea where colorectal cancer is a collection of diseases and we have to refine and modulate our treatment based on the biologic characteristics. And the one thing I find so fascinating about colorectal cancer in particular is even though we've had all these great breakthroughs and we talk about right-sided versus left-sided, we talk about targeted agents, our backbones remain the drugs that you talked about. We still have full fox, full fury, five fu based therapies as the backbone of every jumping off point. But we're starting to see we can incorporate in these new targeted agents and incorporate in newer agents that may someday replace these 5-FU backbones that we've been talking about for, you know, decades. So let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing, what we've seen in the last decade or so, where you touched on that a little bit, but let's talk a little bit more in depth. What are some exciting things that we've seen in the last five to 10 years that have really started to transform the way we're looking at these patients and looking at them more heterogeneously as opposed to this patient just has colorectal cancer, we're gonna give them full fox. How are we adapting the way we're, we're looking at these patients? So, um, the way I do it in my practice, and I preach that idea to all my fellows and students, which is it is important to profile the colorectal cancer patients right up front. And I use a very simple formula, A, B, C, anatomic profiling, biologic profiling, and profiling based on patient conditions. When we have all these components, then we know exactly how to approach that patient. And more interestingly, 
you know, anatomic profiling gives you information about biology. Like if there is a long only colorectal cancer, metastatic colorectal cancer patients, you know that that patient will do much better than somebody who has liver mats. So the anatomic information is telling us about the biology, you know. And then, as we know that colorectal cancer is a collection of multiple diseases driven by very different mechanisms, you know, we do the biological profiling, you know, doing the, you know, genomic testing, and then the condition, you know, young versus old and all those factors. So that kind of is my go-to approach, and I, I find it very useful. I love that. I'm going to start using that kind of outline. That's fantastic. And I have not patented it, so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you should patent it. No, it's really good, and I think it also goes to show when we talk about the buzzwords these days, right, of precision oncology and pers personalized medicine and personalized oncology, that is exactly what we're talking about, and you can apply that to colorectal cancer. So tell me a little bit about what you think about immunotherapy in colorectal cancer, because I always tell people I'm a GI oncologist. We don't get, you know, the standing ovations at ASCO for these groundbreaking trials looking at IO therapy. But there have been some exciting things that have happened in the IO space in um, in colorectal cancer. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, definitely. You know, I think obviously we started in the MSI high space. You know, that's very exciting. Neo adjuvant data for that's incredible. But I still think of, you know, in the, in the metastatic setting, you know, only five to seven percent roughly will have an MSI high tumor. So it really leaves a majority of patients um, where we're not really going to be able to use immunotherapy for. Uh, but I would say, you know, recently, you know, the bot bowel regimen in particular has really been something we've been very excited about. Um, you know, it is confined really to the population that has lung mets only, so those without liver metastases, which is unfortunate. That's a, a large percentage of patients. But it has been very exciting, you know, to see responses in people that are MSS colorectal cancer, no biomarker, uh, with lung mets only, you can really see some great responses there. So I think there's a lot more to come, you know, a lot more targets that we're looking for, checkpoints beyond, you know, PD-1 and CTLA-4, um, that I think there's a lot of brightness in our future there. You're probably referring to that Bod Bell story with the lung only metastatic disease in the MSS colorectal cancer. So I think we're all watching, you know, impatiently for the final data. Uh, so that would be another important um, armament in our arsenal.